Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Yokohama. Welcome to Conservation Ag Update. We are live here at Precision Planting's PTI Farm in Pontiac, Illinois. I'm Noah Newman. So we're getting set for a special pre-conference workshop here ahead of the National Strip Tillage Conference. And I gotta tell you what, there's a lot of great stuff out here. Look how tall these soybeans are. We're gonna be learning all about those throughout the day. Um, but I caught up with PTI farm manager, Jason Webster, for the inside scoop on why this research farm brings hundreds of people from all over the globe out here to central Illinois every single year. It's 400 acres of on-farm research. We're testing products and technologies from precision planting, but we also test technologies and other equipment from all other companies that are available in the marketplace. And what we try to do on this farm is challenge the status quo. We're taking all the things that farmers are used to using, what they feel comfortable with, and we compare it to something else. So we invite um, thousands of growers from around the world. So we're about 85 miles south of Chicago, right along Interstate 55. We've got great access, great visibility. And at this farm, we just invite growers to come out and have a conversation. Here's some of the research that we're doing. And then it's, it's, it's a way for farmers to have a conversation with other growers, other peers. So here's what we're doing. What do you guys think? And, the, and it, every day is a different conversation. And starting in July, so we got the month of July, the month of August, and even the month of September, every day here at this farm, we, we, we invite farmers out, um, industry groups, and we just talk about ways to be better. Emerging from the corn for our next segment, as you can tell, we're going to be moving around a lot during this broadcast. Uh, so Webster's going to be presenting some of the key findings from the PTI Farm Research this year at the National Strip Tillage Conference. We'll have highlights from his presentation coming soon to notillfarmer.com. Well, I'll tell you what, a no-till legend is set to make his debut at the National Strip Tillage Conference. Four-time Lesser Media Presenter of the Year, Marion Calmer, is here in central Illinois to present about a solution, a potential solution to his uh, nutrient stratification problems in his long-term no-till fields. The independent farm researcher found 50% of his P and K was in the top two inches of his soil. He set up an experiment and tried mold board plowing 1.6 acres to see if plowing would move the nutrients down into the soil profile. Well, after seeing the results, Calmer decided it's time to make some big changes. There was a nine bushel advantage to de-stratification or incorporating those nutrients into the soil profile. So I'm gonna make some changes because of this uh, for next year. And uh, we're going to run a soil warrior this fall and uh, we're gonna prepare a, a a zone that's like 10 inches by 10 inches by maybe 12 inches deep. We're going to till it up. We're going to mix some nutrients in there so that they're in the root zone where the moisture is at um, so that we can grow even a better crop. And this will mark Calmer's first return to strip till corn since 1995 when he made that switch to a 15 inch no tillage. We'll have highlights from his presentation as well coming soon to notillfarmer.com. Now let's send it back to the studio holding down the fort for us is assistant editor McCain Vogel. Standing by with today's Cover Crop Connection. Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here, Assistant Editor for Cover Crop Strategies. On the most recent episode of the Cover Crop Strategies podcast, I spoke with Zach Larson and Tyler Williams, two sustainable systems agronomists with Bayer. You can see Larson and other Bayer agronomists here working out in the field, which is part of the support that comes with Bayer's Foreground program. Foreground seeks to make it easier for farmers to adopt regenerative agriculture practices such as cover crops, and provides them with resources for doing so. Uh, we started this about a year ago, really kind of focused on three areas. One, the, the agronomic and sort of the science behind what we're doing. A lot of what, you know, what Zach's expertise are in, you know, the, the science behind soil health and cover crops. And, and especially that's kind of what our team's designed to do is how can we help agronomically make some of these things happen? So we have kind of a team focused around that, resources, content, things that we can put together to help growers do that. Um, the other piece and that we hear a lot about, as you mentioned, was sort of the, the economics and sort of some of the barriers financially up front that, that it takes to, to be a part of it. So we work with a number of folks and try to collaborate and bring discounts and resources and services or tools that partners can kind of come in and say, hey, you know, we can provide this service to growers. Um, they, you know, allow our growers to have discounts for some of those services. And again, just to help them take that next step and, and reduce that barrier to entry. And then the last thing, you know, that usually gets a lot of the, the buzz and the attention, at least as of late, is, is sort of that revenue stream or that added straight income that can come from, 
from adopting these practices. And so that's, again, kind of another key component of foreground is bringing those revenue opportunities that, you know, can get growers over those hurdles to that, that it might take to, to start something or help reduce the risk or take off a little bit of the sting if, um, if you're going to make that first purchase. You can listen to the full conversation between myself, Zach, and Tyler at CoverCropStrategies.com slash podcasts. Back to you, Noah. Thanks a lot, McCain. Great stuff as always. Can't believe they uh, let me sit up here in the cab of the uh, Haggy sprayer here. Hopefully I don't break anything. But it is time now for our farmer feature. Today we're catching up with Lori Isley, fifth generation farmer who strip tills and no tills corn and soybeans in Palmyra, Michigan, uh, across about 1,100 acres. She's also the president of the United Soybean Board, and she's been using cover crops for a long time. And as she tells our Mike Lesser here in this interview, she thinks cover crop adoption rates are actually going to skyrocket here in the near future. I think we're going to see an increase in, in cover crop adoption, partly because of programs such as Farmers for Soil Health and other ones that are out there, but also because it's become a conversation on many different levels. We now have companies that are looking for that have set climate smart goals, that have set sustainability goals, that are looking for um, products that they can source that are being raised in a way that they consider to be sustainable. So when the marketplace speaks, farmers listen. And I think as we begin to see an emphasis on it from that end, as well as simply more farmers around them that are trying them and being successful in our case, Sometimes it was simply the ability of that soil to better absorb a heavy water event. Sometimes it's simply just seeing, wait a minute, I have puddles, you know, huge puddles in my field, but the field over there, you know, that's, that's already been absorbed. I think that's, I wanna see what's happening and why that's the case. So we try and do workshops at the farm. We have pretty much an open door policy when people wanna come and see how things work, but I think there needs to be a willingness to be open to learning new things and adopting new practices and as you get younger farmers coming into the industry, I think you're going to see an increased adoption of that. Check it out. We found some drones here at the PTI farm. So we figured this would be a perfect backdrop for our ahead of the curve segment. We're paying a visit to autonomous swarm farming company, Sabanto. They recently announced the release of an autonomy kit for existing tractors. And uh, this past winter, I actually had the chance to head to their Ames, Iowa headquarters and visit with VP of product, Corey Spietti for an in-depth look at what it takes to set up and operate an autonomous tractor. So this is autonomy in action, check it out. This is our uh, makeitgovroom.com, which is our, our website optimized for mobile. You can see that the speed is zero, the engine RPM is zero, the PTO is off. You can see, see what the fuel tank level is here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to start the engine here. And so now it's, it's spinning up to speed and now you can see the engine RPM rising up to around 800 RPM. So that's it. Yeah, so this is, this is autonomous farming, remote starting, set the tractor off on a mission. And if you'd like, we can kind of peek out the door here and, and see, kind of see the tractor just kind of doing its thing out there. This is where you want to get to in autonomy, boredom. Like, Finding yourself with, you know, the task of finding something else to do. Um, that's, what, uh, that's what autonomy is all about. So I'm gonna resume navigation and we'll, uh, the brake will disengage and we'll start moving. Oh, go ahead, sit your back here, buddy. And so what, what I've kind of found with, with these tractors, with these autonomous operating systems are, is they make great offices for, for getting a lot of work done. Uh, and I, I am actually very guilty of uh, working several Saturdays and Sundays, uh, you know, on my laptop in, in here in the cab and the tractor just, just kind of moving along and, and doing its thing. So uh, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. But with that said, I think that that's, that's gonna be kind of the paradigm shift when, when autonomy, as autonomy comes into the marketplace is that, you know, we may not live in a world where, where the operators just leave the, leave the machines alone to, to you know, operate, I'll say, um, 
freely. I, I envision a world where you might have multiple systems in one field, but maybe just one operator. And that one operator is keeping an eye on the tractors, he's keeping an eye on the implements, making sure that everything's working as it should, making sure nothing's catching on fire, making sure nothing <laughs> crawls into the road and you know all of those things. But um, so I, in agriculture, I just don't think that you know, things are in a, a place where the operator or the human can be taken out of the loop. But I will say that the technology that, that's coming to the marketplace sure makes it maybe easier for, for one operator to, to command, you know, multiple, multiple machines and get a lot of work done in a, in a given day. Big thanks to Corey and his crew for giving us a peek behind the curtain there. Really cool to see the inner workings of Sabanto. We moved on to the equipment sandbox portion of the PTI farm uh, tour here. This is the Yetter Fast Dura Placer, this new strip till toolbar that they developed. It's currently on the market. So this is one of the newer pieces of equipment that people are going to be seeing out here. But it is time now for our video of the week. And it comes to us from TikToker at Growing Corn 2020. Very cool video here. He actually discovered a uh, soil testing tool that delivers results on the spot. Check it out. So this is Tom Utel right here. He's the main man. Check out this soil probe right here. This is all digital. It's gonna be hard to see with the sun. So tell us what this does. Well, actually what this does, this is a lab on a probe. So we go out, create the same hole that we normally would with your regular soil probe. Stick this in the ground, just like that. Hit the test button. And normally it takes, you know, 10 to 15 seconds. And it'll actually upload, georeference the location that we're at. It'll send that information to the cloud and you'll have an answer back of what your soil test are reading here in five to 10 minutes. Okay, so we're in the truck with the iPad. That little yellow dot, that's where we put the probe in. The blue dot's the truck. So then you come over here and you click that. And this will bring your soil test up right here. And that brings our tour of the PTI farm to a close. That'll wrap up this week's edition of Conservation Ag Update. Big thanks to Jason Webster and the entire Precision Planting team for hosting us this week. And for all things no-till, strip-till, and cover crops, head to no-tillfarmer.com, striptillfarmer.com, or covercropstrategies.com. Also, if you have any story ideas, shoot me an email at nnewman at lessetermedia.com. Until next time, have a great day.